What's up guys? My name is Daz. Welcome back to Motive Tick Mastery. It's been a while since I've shared a video. I've been in India the last couple of months so the internet has been poor. Um, not that that is an excuse. I, I would love to keep creating these videos and so today I wanted to get back into my emails and I have an email here from one of my students from the course um, asking me a really beautiful question which I feel as if a lot of people are going to be able to relate to so I will uh, uh, share my feedback to her to you and hopefully you'll pick up some goodness on your road of healing uh, letting go of this condition motor tick chronic ticks Tourette's because the power really is in your mind and body you have the potential to stop this condition just because it's uh, neurological it doesn't mean that you can't do anything about it right just because you were born with a predispos predisposition does not mean that you have to have it and uh, a lot of people who've had this condition for a long time have given up believing but if you're watching this video I want you to know that yes it is possible I have been through that journey and now I share with you um, my perspective and how I went about doing it on this channel and through my online course. So I'm going to read out this email and um, you should be able to get a gist of it uh, fairly quickly. So I watch your videos and you can certainly, you and you certainly do help me feel so much calmer and at peace. So I know your techniques work but then what happens is as soon as I finished watching your videos or I stop my meditation or stop my yoga or after I do a run or whatever techniques I am putting into practice, they work at the time, but the stress of daily life continues. I.e. I have kids, I have dogs, I have a husband, I have a self-employed business, I'm driving around being a taxi in a very busy city of Edinburgh. Everything just starts all over again. I then feel out of control and my facial tightening habits seem to be getting worse, but not when I am at peace, it stops completely. I hope this makes sense, but despite doing everything to keep myself in a state of peace and calmness, which I do manage to do, it all starts up again and my face is so painful. I don't know how to keep this calm feeling long term. These facial tics in the form of eyelid tightening, <clears throat> nose scrunching and cheek clenching only started a couple of months ago. I am 48. I recently was referred to a neurologist who diagnosed me with blepharospasm. I don't know this word actually, but this is now spreading into my other facial muscles. The bereavement therapist says it is years of suppressed stress now coming out physically in me. I'm pretty terrified this will last forever. I'm doing everything I can to help myself. I eat well, I run, I see a reflexologist, I swim, I do yoga, I meditate. I have a loving and supporting husband. I see my bereavement counselor, I take supplements, but as you can imagine, I have a very busy homework life. I use a screen constantly for work, etc. And this face tightening is just not stopping and I actually feel getting worse. The more I think about it and the more I panic. Can this ever stop even though I am doing everything you suggest? <clears throat> thank you so much for your course which I did and thank you for being there on the videos as you're teaching me so much and you're hopefully helping me on the road to recovery. I think you are doing a marvelous job reaching out to others to help them heal as you did. Thank you, best wishes. And she wanted to be called, call me Cher. Okay, so this is from Cher. So it's such a beautiful, honest email that I received. She's gone through my teachings, she's gone through the course, she's acted out the practices that I've shared. But still, right, right? But still she's having problems um, integrating the peace that she can find and she knows that she has into everyday life. So she knows that that peace exists. She knows that it can be experienced, those silent, quiet, still states of the mind and the body. And so that's the first step on this road, knowing that 
that place of absolute stillness and peacefulness in the body can be there. Because a lot of people actually don't know it can be there because they're so caught up in the pain of the condition. The tick is always happening. Like, as soon as they wake up, they're ticking. Like, usually worse in the afternoons and the mornings, based on those that I've spoken with. So she understands that that peace exists. It can happen. I can feel that experience of zero emptiness. But then, life gets in the way. The stress of daily life continues. I have kids, I have dogs, I have a husband, I have a self-employed business, I'm driving around in a, in a taxi. And so she's identifying her stressful triggers, right? Like there's a lot of stuff going on in her life. Her life is stressful from the perspective that she is looking at it. When I see kids, dogs, husband, I think, wow, three beautiful things with so much love, isn't that incredible? So the stress doesn't come from those things. It's not because I have dogs it's stressful, because I have a husband it's stressful. It's not because I have kids it's stressful. It's because I choose to act in this world in a way which makes me stressed out. But it's not their fault, they're not making me stressed. It's something in the way that I am working and I'm choosing to interact with them and I'm choosing to go about planning my life and uh, executing my day-to-day -day activities <laughs> that's making me stressful or stressed. And then this stress um, uh, uh, is communicated to her through the body moving with the ticks. It's the, the body moves to indicate that there is stress or there's stuff coming up Right, as the um, bereavement therapist said. It's like we push down so much stuff in this society and it, it, we don't know how to express ourselves and get stuff out. And so the body ticking is the first sign of, oh, there's something going on that I need to look at. So if you are living your life as you currently are, share, and you're still ticking, something needs to shift, right? Something still needs to shift. And what's the most important thing that, for you that needs to shift in your life? And each and every one of us knows the truth to these questions. When I asked that question, a thought would have popped up in Cher's head. Oh, that's the thing. Oh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to look at that. Because right. our intuition is very good at telling us what, where we need to go, what we need to do next to live a more peaceful, blissful, relaxed, loving life. Our intuition always knows. <clears throat> so it looks like Cher has, she has the tools and she's practiced some of the tools. But it feels carpamental, carpa, how do I say this word? <laughs> Carpamentalized. It's like, okay, done my meditation now, back to the stresses of life. It's like, if I do this, then this thing will, right? If I do this yoga, then, I'm, then it'll be fine over here. So it looks like it's been compartmentalized. If I do this, then this will happen. But that's not how um, it's not how this works, or how I teach the first lesson in, in in the MTM method. It's important to recognize that we must take that breathing practice that I teach into the moments when we are stressed, right? So the first lesson in the MTM method is a use of the breath, which allows us to reset the nervous system to bring in our mind and body into a state of a parasympathetic, which is basically when the nervous system gets to relax, recharge and rest, which sends all the beautiful chemicals around the body to relax ourselves. And so that breath isn't something that was mentioned in this particular email. And I really want to reinforce it here, Cher. It's like, it looks like you are doing the practices and then just going back into normal life and expecting everything to be fine. We have to start taking that place of peace, that space that we create in the practices, 
the relaxation, the state of presence, and slightly, oh, I'm in that. Right? Take that place, that emotional, energetic feeling, and try and push it or bring it into the stresses of the life, into the normal life feels like there's a barrier. I'll do this and this right now. So we need to start bringing it in to our life. So what I encourage you to do from reading this email is go back to the basics. It's great that you're doing all this stuff. You're doing the stuff. Go back to the basics of this breath. The basics of this breath is something that you can weave into day-to-day -day life when you are feeling triggered. So, let's take an example. Uh, but, the stress of life continues. I have kids, dogs, husband. Okay. Let's say something happens with the kids. Suddenly, I feel some stress bubbling up inside me. I feel like I need to get them to school on time. I need to get to work. I don't have enough time. I'm running, I'm running around like a headless chicken. There's like crazy life, you know, lives that we've created right now in our society. <clears throat> so, you're feeling it. So the trick is catching, catching ourselves when we are feeling stressed earlier, okay? Catching ourselves when we are feeling stressed earlier because we can ignore the stress and just keep going on. We just need to get there, need to go 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 there. Well, how does that help anybody if you're stressed doing all of this, right? We have to take a breath, really simple. And you can weave this into any part of your life. You need to get the kids out, you need to get the kids doing this, you need to get the kids doing that. Taking just 20 seconds for yourself, 30 seconds, 50 times a day to yourself to take a breath, reset yourself with the three, four, five breathing technique will do you wonders. So instead of doing the techniques in their own siloed spots of the day, you, you must now start weaving in these techniques into the moments in which you are feeling the stress. And this is, this is, this is the practice now for you. This is where we're at for you right now. You know peace exists. You know you live your life that makes you stressed. Now there are these two extremes, okay? So now we need to start merging these two things together. Taking an extra 10 minutes to do the mindfulness practice in the middle of the day, right? Right? As a break in the afternoon whilst you're working, instead of going for a coffee and drinking more coffee with your friends and having a natter, stop, take some time and go inwards. There's many different things here we can do in order to take time for yourself versus others. I feel as if too, like if you've suppressed a lot of this energy and emotions for a long time in your life, you know, yes, this stuff is ready to come up, but this stuff can come up and you can release it in a beautiful way, not in a way where, where there's so much friction and pain. Like suffering is a choice. I've just been watching Muji recently, actually, who's a spiritual teacher. Um, yeah, based in Portugal, he's a Jamaican British guy, he's doing satsangs here in Rishikesh where I am right now. And um, uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? <clears throat> I've forgotten the train of thought because I got lost thinking about Muji. Oh, come on, Dazzy. So I am now getting stressed, so I'm going to take a moment. What I do now in this moment can use this as an example, is to just stop my outwards projection into the world. Go inwards. Take a breath. And then breathe out. And all I'm doing is just bringing my awareness to my breath. This is Mindfulness 101. It's simple, deceivingly simple. And 
That is the only tool we need to stop stress. That and our ego to help us remember to do that when we're in the middle of getting stressed. And that's a difficult bit, right? So what you can do is you put yellow sticky notes up around, remind yourself to do it in those moments. When you know you get stressed in the day-to-day -day life, oh, usually at that moment of the day, I'm usually more stressed. You know, set a commitment in order to do something there in your calendar to have a five minute break. You know. you know, there's so many ways to just take time for yourself and stop and be still, be with your breath, do the breathing technique, be mindful, hear the sounds, see the thoughts, let them go. The tick is just an indication of an overstressed mind and body. So your life as it is set up right now, share, is stressful. It's freeing knowing that. Wow, I have created a life that is really stressful. It gives you a little bit of room, doesn't it? It's like, wow, it is really stressful. You're allowed to say that to yourself. It is really stressful. And by admitting it to ourselves, we can. We can then make better choices going forward. We can make better choices. Admitting to ourselves, wow, I am really stressed out. I am in a lot of pain emotionally right now. By saying these things to ourselves, we go, oh wow, that's true, yeah. Okay, instead of being in it, uh, right, we're in it and we can just take a breathing. And now we can look at the situation with a little bit of a detachment, a little bit of space, and we can see, oh, I can maybe make a better choice here, or I make, make, a, make a better decision here, or I can do something here, or I can not do any of those things today and just be, <laughs> which is easy, easy to say for me because I don't have kids, right, you know? Um, but nevertheless, the, the concepts I'm sharing with you, the ideas I'm sharing with you, can be brought into your life. It just takes a little bit of room, a little bit of will, and a little bit of space to just, just shift things around and see it from a slightly greater vantage point. And I know from, from this video, you will have picked up a few different perspectives that you can take in your mind now that will just help you live a little bit calmer in the coming few weeks. And then give me an update share. And drop me an email again and let me know how you are doing again. Go back to the basics. Get back to that breath. Use a breath when you notice, notice yourself getting stressed. Not two hours later where your whole body is like, mm -mm, okay? But, but when you're first noticing it coming up like that, okay? Go back to those basics. It's great that you're doing all the other stuff, great, but let's go back to the basics, because that's the one, that breathing technique is the one you can bring into your everyday moment of your life. You can catch it whilst it's happening. Okay, I think that feels good for now. That's a good 18 minute download, 19 minute download for you. Um, I wish you the best in the coming weeks. Let me know how you get on. And those of you who are watching this video too, if you have any specific questions for me or you have a situation or scenario that you would like to share with me, send me an email and I'll read it out and I'll use it as, a, as cannon fodder, in a sense, to help share some perspectives on mindfulness and beating this condition um, uh, on this channel. Um, so the more you open up and you are vulnerable with me, the more goodness I can maybe possibly share with you too. Okay, have a wonderful day everyone. Check out my other videos, check out the online course and uh, uh, the free book and the online, uh, I have some free training for people as well to check out at some point. An hour long training which introduces uh, a lot of this stuff um, where I go a bit deeper as well. So have a wonderful day and we'll catch up soon. Okay, ciao.